Hi and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at and appreciate a laptop that I feel has aged pretty well given it is 10 years old. It is a top spec retro Sony Veo from the sleek VPC range. More specifically the VPC Z12C5E. Although retro might be pushing it, 2010, not that long ago. Next week I'm going 70s, 80s Sony. Now that is retro. Don't miss it. Get subscribed. Okay, so design. It's clear they were ahead of their competition in aspects that make us drool today when it comes to things like the screen to body ratio. I mean, look at those bezels. Yeah, I might give you a clearer picture here. Really sleek bezels for its time impressive stuff and the design and lightweight feel of this laptop is something to behold really and we're going to cover all the ports in a moment but let us appreciate some of the lines that are on this build and some of the nice touches we have to make it aesthetically pleasing let's run over the ports we've got mini firewire Express card 54, a USB type A, HDMI, Ethernet, Kensington lock, and AC power adapter. The back is clean. On this side, a chunky VGA and a disk drive. We'll get into that shortly. And another USB type A. On the front, we have, uh, it's obviously not a combo jack because that's not common back then, but we've got a headphone jack and a microphone jack a Wi-Fi toggle switch and SD card and Sony's proprietary memory stick duo as they were getting really into that. As this laptop predates USB 3 functionality on laptops, I added a USB 3 port using the express card slot. This is a StarTech one port USB 3 express card expansion. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it is a top spec machine from its time. Let's see what that looks like. It is a Intel Core i7, first generation 620 running at 2.67 gigahertz. It's got two cores and four threads. There's eight gigabytes of RAM installed. And what really caught my attention is that there are four times 64 gigabyte SSDs in RAID to make 256 gigabytes. Of course, it's not as rapid as today's impressively quick SSDs, but simply seeing this displayed in the BIOS like this is pretty sweet. There is even a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce GT 330 mobile. Sony went all out and even included a Blu-ray rewriter on this. It will even do some dual layer Blu-rays and it has an elect electronic eject button. Very smart. Let's briefly cover the input devices on this laptop. As you can see here, the touchpad is absolutely tiny. So we're gonna not gonna sugarcoat that. That is one of my least favorite things about this laptop. We do have a fingerprint sensor, which works really well in Windows 10. And then the keyboard itself, which is a absolute joy to type on. It's backlit as well. Whoops, camera's shaking too much. Anyway, there's really good key travel on this keyboard. It's, a joy to type on so this is this is really good now in the top left corner we have a graphics hybrid selection system now i'm going to cover this in a moment about how this doesn't work under windows 10 due to driver incompatibilities but what this effectively allowed the user to do back in 2010 is switch between the dedicated gpu which will be used for games and also power hungry applications but then you will also get really bad battery life. But you could also switch it to stamina mode in which the built-in Intel GPU would kick in instead, allowing you to go for your longer days running on battery power, which is a really neat system. As you can see it, you know, that light does come on, but the stamina, it doesn't switch between a dedicated GPU and integrated GPU. And so this leads me swiftly on to using this laptop in 2020. As the device shipped with Windows 7, the drivers to make use of all the features here with regards to the GPU switching for performance versus stamina modes are broken in Windows 10. Thanks to a fantastic community, there are Windows 10 drivers to take advantage of all the hardware if you're happy to leave behind the stamina switching abilities to save battery. 
A modified BIOS and custom drivers are available to get the best out of the machine in 2020 running Windows 10, which to be honest is amazing. You've got to be grateful to those super fans who make that happen. Leaving me to discuss the two major annoyances about this laptop when you're using it day to day away from your desk. The battery life on this thing is absolutely abysmal. It doesn't last that long. You're looking at one hour with this battery, maybe an hour and a half with the thicker uh, extended battery. And yes, I have got them replaced, but it just won't do the trick. It can't handle more than two hours on battery power. So it's pretty useless to actually take out on the road, but it's a nice laptop to use around the house. The other annoying aspect of this laptop is the touchpad. Not only is it too small, but of course we don't have Windows Precision drivers. We've got everyone trying to make their own drivers for Windows, and in Windows 10, the gestures just do not work, and it is a pain to use. Now you can just plug in an external mouse and carry on, um, but the tracking on this does work. If you're not fussed about gestures, the tracking works just fine, but you know, two touch finger scroll or using the side to scroll up and down, left and right from the bottom, it's just not very good at all. Okay, so my closing thoughts on this laptop. We'll be keeping this in the household for sure. It might as well, especially as it is a unique powerhouse from its time, but now Sony are not even making Veos anymore. A shame really, because Veo laptops have had great styling and sometimes very unique form factors. My understanding is that Veo brand lives on, but there haven't been any head turners since. I hope you enjoyed this look at a retro-ish laptop. Leave a like if you had a good time and don't forget to subscribe and change your notification to see more tech videos like this. I'm the Techno G, signing out. Take care.